all the time, but generally quite a lot of the time, actors will go above and beyond to ensure their performance isn't just entertaining, but believable. But not every performance gives us a John Wick, and sometimes the biggest stars in the business can sometimes struggle to make the simplest of things look right. I'm Ewan, you're watching What Culture, and here are 10 simple things actors can't make look convincing. Number 10. Driving. Okay, so obviously big caveat here. There have been a lot of movies that have convincingly pulled off driving, whether that's by having actors actually in control of a vehicle in question, or through clever editing techniques, splicing them into the position of a stunt driver, or just generally having convincing visual effects to work with. However, this historically hasn't always been the case. In certain shots of a movie, a car won't be on the road at all, and instead be propped up on a rig with a projected image in the background. While rear projection certainly has its charm and personally never bothers me, in fact I really like it, the resulting image isn't what you'd call convincing if that's what you want from your movies. An example of one of the less convincing bits of rear projection impacted on a car scene. In North by Northwest, actor Ken Lynch forgets to lean his body when the car turns. His co-star, Cary Grant, noticeably, and some would say angrily, shoves into Ken, reminding him he's meant to lean to the side like I do when I'm getting overly competitive at Mario Kart. Number 9. Drinking Coffee Considering how many film and TV scenes take place in diners and cafes, the cast and crew should be well versed on how to drink coffee, or their hot beverage of choice. But that's rarely the case. Despite the fact that nearly every episode of Friends had at least one episode inside a cafe, the central perk, the ensemble rarely drank their beverages like, well, a bunch of friends. I used all my brain power for that one, I tell ya. Firstly, coffee is really hot, and yet characters guzzle their morning brew as soon as it's offered to them, presumably scalding their mouths in the process. If the contents of the mugs can't be seen, the production team might not use coffee at all, forcing the actors to mime while they quote unquote drink. This is a sensible idea since there's no chance of spillage, and especially if you need to have me in the scene because one way or another, that tea is getting everywhere. Not in a fun gossipy way, I just somehow struggle to function like an adult human and not spill things. But even so, casting directors, this is a consideration you will have to bear in mind if you look my way for the next James Bond. Number 8. Performing CPR CPR must be administered on a person in cardiac arrest to keep the blood flowing to the heart and brain. Since this life-saving technique looks intense, it's a great way to ramp up drama in a scene. You know, stuff like, DON'T YOU DIE ON ME! OH NO! 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 Now, it's no surprise that CPR is simplified in fiction, especially since the full process should take about half an hour. However, it's astonishing how little the filmmakers tend to research CPR, especially when it's portrayed in a medical drama. The simplest mistake that most actors make is how gentle they are with the compressions. The administrator needs to violently push their hands down, often to the point where it breaks the patient's ribs. It sounds horrible, but but giving the chest a little rub just isn't gonna help anyone, unless you're weird. Also, the compressions and mouth to mouth don't just require force, but actual precision. Unless two breaths are executed after every 30 compressions, it won't work. Most depictions show the person giving mouth to mouth and compressions at irregular intervals. Oh, and while we're on the topic, one of the most accurate portrayals of CPR actually occurs in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, despite the show's fantasy storyline, the scene depicting Buffy trying to resuscitate her deceased mother is extremely realistic. Although the procedure fails, Buffy couldn't have done any more. Not only did she call an emergency line to walk her through the procedure, she administered two breaths at a time and performed chest compressions until the ribs cracked. The show isn't exactly known for its realism, nor should it be, but the way CPR is represented here is actually spot on. Number 7. Brushing Teeth Brushing teeth is a toll that everyone must perform at least twice on a daily basis to keep the pearly white spick and spam. Insert big buck of British smiles and but your what culture jokes here because we've heard it all. But that doesn't change the fact dental hygiene looks pretty gross. While working away around the gums, it's not uncommon for toothpaste and spittle to drip from the mouth and turn you into a big, radiated froth monster. And so, films and television shows do their best to make scrubbing 
having teeth pleasing on the eye. To avoid saliva dribbling everywhere, actors tend to use very little toothpaste or none at all when brushing. If viewers look closely, they'll see the characters are usually just scraping away at their teeth with a dry brush. Also, the characters' teeth usually look perfect before the brushing has even started. Although many adults floss to clean in between their teeth, that's rarely the case in movies, unless it leads to a joke. There will be exceptions to the rule, obviously, but overall, it looks pretty simulated each time. Number 6. Typing for the longest time, Hollywood struggled to portray anything involving computers even semi-realistically. Early computer movies like War Games and Hackers made the internet resemble a virtual world, rather than lines of complex, dull coding. Until recently, hacking was often depicted like literal magic. You'd have an actor replicate the typing motion of Kermit on a typewriter and then say something like, I'm in. But even with us fully immersed in the computer age, typing, hacking, or any any internet related thing in general always tends to have a bit of the goopiness to it on movies and TV shows. I'm not just talking about ghost typing, where actors clickety clack everywhere without any methodology whatsoever, but rather VFX used to depict internet browsing in general. Sometimes movies will get it right by literally having actors navigate web pages themselves, but sometimes in big spy movies, you'll have apps rendered post shoot or general visual displays that look way too fluid to the point where it doesn't look like the performers are actually interacting with the technology supposedly in their hands. Again, not an every movie problem, but it's noticeable when it crops up. Also, while I'm here, let me know your favorite Hackerman scenes in the comments below. My personal shout, every scene in Sneakers. Dan Aykroyd hacks in that movie, David Strathairn hacks in that movie, it's cinematic perfection. Number five, eating. Even though eating is, in theory, one of the simplest acts a person can perform, I say that there's almost probably at least one of you subsisting on the diet of that blue Sonic curry that was doing the rounds the other year, but it can be a nightmare when it comes time for the cameras to start rolling. Since each scene requires multiple takes, wolfing down a burger or taking a bite out of a sandwich causes all sorts of problems. Anime food hitting different makes me hungry, whereas real life food can screw up continuity. And if you're one of those big film continuity people, then that's gonna be a paddling. One sneaky technique to get around this problem is to keep the food unseen. Loath to bring it up though I may be, the Big Bang Theory relied on this method by regularly having the gang chow down from takeaway pots where you can't see the contents inside. But that's not the only issue. Since actors have to perform each scene several times, they can easily eat too many items on a plate while performing a dinner sequence. To avoid this and maintain continuity as much as possible, the camera cuts away before a character swallows, allowing them to spit their food out in between takes. When the camera cuts back to them, they'll pretend to eat, even though there's no food in their mouth. You can see this across multiple scenes in Pulp Fiction as just a random example, but you may be able to spot it best during the Jackrabbit Slim sequence with Mia and Vincent. Number 4. Talking in Nightclubs in the realm of movies, the nightclub is an ironically common destination when the ensemble needs to have a bit of plot-heavy conversation. These scenes rarely come across as realistic, since people don't spend half the conversation yelling, What? And, I can't hear you! Characters rarely have any issue being understood. Despite the fact deafening music is being blasted from every direction, they're standing several feet away from each other and speaking at regular volume. In the real world, conversely, it can be very difficult to hear your your pals when you're working on your permanent hearing damage. Of course, there is always an exception to the rule. In the social network, the way Mark Zuckerberg and Sean Parker speak to each other in the club is pretty perfect. Despite being inches from each other, the pair are struggling to converse. Not every word can be picked up, but the characters, and thus the viewer, can hear just enough to follow the conversation. Although they are talking loudly, the music is louder, forcing the viewer to concentrate to listen exactly how the characters would behave in that exact situation. Number three, playing musical instruments. Playing music on a professional level comes easy to a select few. Whether it's the violin, the drums, or I don't know, the bassoon, it takes hundreds of hours of practice for a musician to become decent, and thousands of hours to become great. Since time is of the essence on most film productions, actors who are expected to play an instrument for a role either prepare thoroughly and do their best to learn an instrument, or just mime. 
Some actors do go the extra mile though, learning how to play the instrument fully for real. Joaquin Phoenix mastered the guitar for Walk the Line, Robert De Niro perfected the saxophone for New York, New York, and Tom Holtz learned the piano for Amadeus, to the point where he could play upside down. And all of this is super impressive because it would be easier to just fake it, right? Well, that depends on how much you value your on-screen accuracy. Any musician can spot an actor pretending to play an instrument from a mile away. There's nothing more distracting for some viewers than watching a performer holding an instrument incorrectly, pressing the keys in the wrong order, or strumming the strings in a natural way, especially when they're not in time with the beat. Even if the actor gets 99% of the movement right, that 1% can be a dead giveaway. Number two, waking up. Even though waking up should be pretty easy to act out, now that I think about it, there are multiple reasons why it rarely looks believable. Firstly, most actors wake up too quickly. Not everyone tends to get out of bed pretty immediately after opening their eyes, unless there's an emergency. It may not be cinematic to watch a groggy person stumble out of bed, but that's the reality of coming out of a deep sleep. But in the movies, people who've been awake for 10 seconds have no problem having a full-blown conversation conversation. And when a character is having a nightmare, the performer tends to overact like their life depends on it. Rather than acting mildly unsettled, they arise from their slumber sweating profusely, screaming hysterically, and sitting bolt upright. Now, to be fair, this always looks pretty cool to me, and having a scene of someone waking up violently is an effective way to scare the hell out of the viewer, especially in a horror movie. But relatively few of us will have done the stupid sexy Hayden Christensen in Revenge of the Sith nightmare wake up in real life so it has to go on this list. And number one, playing video games. I mean, could it be anything else? Since they came into being in the 1970s, video games have been a part of the cinematic landscape. However, unless it's an arcade game being played or a pinball machine, like in this living shot of Sylvester Stallone on the Lethal Weapon 3 cabinet in Copland, God, I want that thing, then it's very rarely going to look convincing. The actors often hold the controller in an unnatural way or just smash the buttons instead of making clear, precise movements. The performers often move their body frantically while gaming, even though this behavior has no effect on the gameplay, unless it's a motion control title. What's worse is nobody in the production seems to understand the simplest aspects of gaming. In the 1995 Jackie Chan action comedy Rumble in the Bronx, which you should go watch, a kid plays a Game Gear despite the fact the console has no cartridge inserted. Boy, I sure hope that somebody got fired for that blunder. Now, since the gaming industry has become vastly more popular in recent years, one would assume there are people who actually play games on every production and know how to fix stuff like this before it comes up. There's only so much mindless button mashing that I can take, okay? 